about the life of David and we saw how it, through the eyes of a shepherd boy David was still a teenager but hold on I'm opening the wrong notes there we go how many of you believe that God wants you to expand raise your hand to take new ground to break new grounds to take new territory to, to stretch your faith even more God wants you to expand. Touch your neighbor and say, God wants you to expand. Let me say this again. The ultimate purpose, if you are in the second stage of life, is to expand. Expand what you already have. But let me give you a warning, okay? When you expand, expect some opposition. Expect some things to come against you. Expect some oppression. Ex expect some aggression. We've been studying the life of David. And the last time we saw David, he was a shepherd boy. Now we're going to see David from a different lens. He's going to be a warrior. Say warrior. He's going to be a fighter. He's going to be a champion. If you were here last Sunday, I shared with you the different roles that I played here at the feast. You remember those? From becoming or from being a, a, a chorus member, I became a, an administrator. I became a runner. I became a worship leader. I became a ministry head. I became a cluster head. And now I'm a feast builder. I've worn a lot of hats in, at the feast. And although my title has changed over the years, my calling has still remained the same. Very important for you to note this, that in the different stages of your life, the character you play may change, but your calling should always remain the same. Okay? Very clear on that. Now, we see David as we study his life. He has now slowly transitioned from being a kid to being a commander, from leading sheep and now leading soldiers. He's no longer the teenager that we saw. In fact, the Bible says David led. Can we read that? Can we put the verse up on the screen? David led his men in battle. Come on, go ahead and read. And was successful in all he did because the Lord was with him. Did you notice something? I don't know if you caught it. The Bible says David led. Everybody say David led. For some reason, you somehow expected the Bible to say David fought along with his men. Because the last time we saw David, he was a fighter. He was fighting with Goliath. All right. I know it's just one word, but let me show you how one word would change the entire picture. When David defeated Goliath, he was a fighter. Say fighter. He wasn't a leader. All right. He fought, but he didn't lead. During the first stage of David's life, he was a master when it came to one-on-one -on -one combat. He fought the lion, he fought the bear, he fought the giant. But on the second stage of David's life, if he was going to expand, he knew that he needed to do something different. He knew that he needed to become a leader and no longer just a fighter. He knew he needed to step out of an old character so that he could step into a new capacity. That's what happens when you expand. As your character changes, your capacity also increases. That's what you need to do in life, my dear friends. Sometimes you need to recognize the character that your season or your stage is calling you to be. What, what character should you play now in your life? And sometimes it entails a little bit of sacrifice. Say sacrifice. It entails a little bit of sacrifice to step out of that old shoe so that you can step into a bigger shoe. That's what David did. In fact, you know, David could have stopped right there after he defeated Goliath. He, he could have retired, you know, he could have hung his laurel wreath. He could have hung his slingshot, put it up on a frame, put it in a museum. But you know what he did? He didn't do that. Instead, he kept using that slingshot, kept entering into bigger battles. That's what you need to do, my friends. If you want to keep on expanding, you want to keep entering bigger battles. Can you touch your neighbor and say, keep fighting bigger battles? Keep fighting bigger battles. That's why David wasn't a one-hit wonder. Sadly, a lot of people are. After they win, after they fight, you know what they do? They retire. After they win, they wane. Instead of fighting and keeping entering bigger battles, they just... Relax at home. Don't do that. Tell your neighbor, don't do that. God doesn't call you to be a museum curator. He doesn't want you to build a museum of past victories. He wants you to be a, come, a kingdom builder. Yes? Take new territory. Conquer new lands. Explore your 
borders. But this is the part that I'm so excited to preach to you. Let me close with this. We go back to the last part of the verse where it says that David, the reason why David was so successful was because God was with him. The Lord was with him. Everybody say, the Lord was with him. Remind the person beside you, the Lord is with you. David knew that. In fact, David saw an advantage. Say advantage. David saw an advantage that the others didn't even see. What was the advantage? Ask me what. He saw that the Lord was with him. In fact, in Acts chapter 2 verse 25, we'll go back to the previous series. When Peter preached during the day of Pentecost, he said that David said about God. Peter said, I saw the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. Listen to this. I will not be shaken. So David said, I saw the Lord always before me. So when the whole army of Israel saw Goliath, you know what they saw? They saw an impossible obstacle. But not David. David saw things a little bit differently. When David saw Goliath, he didn't see an impossible obstacle. He saw an incredible opportunity. While everybody else saw Goliath and, see, and said, he's too big to kill. You know what David said? He's too big to miss. David had the strength and the courage to fight Goliath. Why? Because he saw an advantage that nobody else saw. He saw that he wasn't fighting the battle all by himself. God was before him. Here's the other interesting part. Before you clap, before you clap, I'm going to make you shout in a bit. The other interesting part about that verse is what David said. Because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. He is at my right hand, so I will not be shaken. And I, I got to think about that for an entire week. You know, the Bible says that the right hand signifies power and strength. You know this. That's why Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. The right hand, between the right hand and the left hand, the right hand is greater. The right hand bestows the blessing. It gives the power. So when David said, because he is at my right hand, and if I raise up this hand... I know I've got the upper hand. I've got the upper hand. Today I want you to know that you too have the upper hand. Whenever you lift your right hand, come on, lift your hand, right hand, in the presence of Jesus, that's your advantage. That's your upper hand. If only you could see that God is with you whenever you worship the Lord. If only you could see that God is before you, that God fights for you. You would stand. Because you've got the upper hand. If you believe that, give God a shout. Come on, give God a shout. Everybody say, I can expand. Come on, say, I can expand. Because I've got the upper hand. Amen. Remind the person beside you one more time.